Good morning. We're glad you can join us for Bible study this morning. Today, Pastor Scott and I are going to be talking about the Easter story, but through the eyes of the uh, gospel writer Matthew, rather than John. John gives a much more detailed account, but there are things in the Matthew text, I think, that are important for us to read as well. After we do a short time of looking at the text, we are then going to just share with you some of our favorite memories about Easter. And so, uh, Pastor Scott, if you would read the Matthew text for us this morning. Sure. So, again, the gospel from Matthew is Matthew 28, 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So the women left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Thank you, Scott. I found it interesting <clears throat> at the beginning of the story in Matthew, uh, there was something missing for me. Okay. I don't know if any of you noticed it or not. But what was missing for me is that the women come to the tomb, but they don't bring any spices. Okay. They're not there to dress the body for burial. They're there for another reason. And for Matthew, as I did some research for Matthew, it is uh, important that we say, and, and Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And what uh, it, it was explained in one commentary, and, and in several commentaries actually, is that when they say they went to see the tomb, it wasn't just so that they were there looking at it. Mm -hmm. they, went to their, they went there to ponder, to reflect, to understand what just happened. So that C that we're using there is a much deeper, has a much deeper meaning to it. Mm -hmm. They want some understanding. They're grieving from... Uh, the death of Jesus, their friend, yeah. uh, who they believed was the Messiah. And so they come and hopefully are have some kind of understanding. And then later, here it is tying this in. And if you, if you read this lesson, um, look at how many times the word see appears in this lesson as well. Mm -hmm. But it also says then that they went back um, and let, I have to find it. Here, in the last verse, then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. And again, that verb see isn't that it's not physical sight. It's there they will understand who I am. Mm -hmm. And so for the women, here is, are the women on that day mm -hmm. who come to the tomb mm -hmm. to see, to hopefully understand what happened. And Jesus tells them, Go to Galilee now with your brothers, my brothers and you will understand a little bit more of who I am. So I have to think too, did they go to the tomb remembering that Jesus said, I will be lifted mm. on the third day, or did they go more in a, a state of grief and mourning? Yeah. Um, but I, I love about this text, it, it defines for many believers um, why women are called to be prophets and pastors and uh, leaders in some ways that some denominations kind of don't allow because of some things maybe Paul wrote to a specific context. But we look at Mary Magdalene and the, the other Mary as the first 
prophets, yes. the first apostles, yes. um, they were the ones that Jesus told, go and tell. And, uh, and I love that. I yes. love that we, we go back to the heart of the gospel, the heart of the, the gospel narratives, and we say, no, women have been, have been told equally with men to go and proclaim. Right. And, you know, women like the Easter story because it is women to whom Jesus first came. Mm -hmm. And and I will say, uh, and you probably know this too, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the ordination of women mm -hmm. in the Lutheran Church. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for saying that yeah. and for drawing that out because Jesus really, throughout all of his ministry, but especially here, Jesus gives credence to women being leaders and ministers in uh, of Jesus of God's mission in this world, and so um, you know it's just nice to hear that and have other people people acknowledge the role of women. Well, even as a man, I can say the men were hiding, right? The men were not there at the tomb; they were confused and in hiding for fear of the Judeans, and it was the women taking the lead, and I. I think that's worth lifting it's, up and it's noting. It's very much so, very much worth lifting up and, and leading as, and, and uh, pointing that out as well. Uh, another thing that I saw was twice. I like to, when I read a text, I like to look at the repetitions. Mm -hmm. So one of them is the word suddenly. It says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. And then down later it says suddenly Jesus met them and said greetings and they came to him took hold of his feet and worshiped him the purpose of that word in for Matthew uh, is to show that there is a change happening in the world a big change happening in the mm -hmm. world for Matthew this suddenly the angel came and rolled away the stone meant that time and world and being mm -hmm. and life would never be the same again yeah. And then suddenly when Jesus comes to the women, means the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the first suddenly, we know the tomb is empty. Mm -hmm. In the second suddenly, we know that Jesus is raised from the dead. Right. And those give us the poignancy of Easter and how important it is for us to always remember and return to that first Easter day mm -hmm. and see the awesomeness of that for us. Something that stood out to me, Bonnie, was um, fear and great joy. Mm -hmm. So let me find the exact quote of it, but they, yeah, sits down. Okay, so they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. Yeah. And I think that is what a life of faith, authentic faith is all about. It's both um, being kind of in awe and almost fear of the holiness of God or the <clears throat> mysteriousness of God, um, but then also, um, you know, to find joy in, in, in hope, in faith, and in, in the peace that God gives. So, um, I don't think that faith is all about happy feelings. Um, it's not all about, you know, God blesses me all the time and everything is good in life because I have faith. Um, it's always a mix of, of heartache and, and hope. Yes, yes. That, that's life. And, and yes. we're experiencing that so yes. acutely in the country today, right? Yes. Um, this pandemic, and especially in Holy Week, the, the, the peak yes. for many states yes. of the pandemic. Yes. It, it's not a happy week right. in, in, the, in the world, in the country. And yet we have to balance. Um, I wrote a blog yesterday about kind of Holy Week in the time of the pandemic. And I said, we always have to balance kind of the cross and the empty tomb, yeah. right? So we, we have, we do have this eternal hope of new life, um, of, of second chances, of resurrection, but we, we have to balance that with, with the death that we have to go through to get to that rising. Mm -hmm. There can't be an Easter resurrection mm -hmm. <clears throat> without a Good Friday cross right. and death. There just can't be. And we have to sit in that death. Absolutely. We have to, and, and, which is, I think, the whole, uh, there's lots of reasons because of the Sabbath and all of those things, but 
which is also why it's good for us on Saturday mm -hmm. to sit in that death. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't die and was raised again immediately. It was sitting in that death. And um, for all of them, they had to in some way own the grief. And <clears throat> we tend to sometimes want to walk through Holy Week mm -hmm. and not own the grief. Yep. And we have to. We have to acknowledge that Jesus died and was dead. And even Jesus hanging there, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken? Yes. Even, yes. even Jesus felt abandoned. He, yes. He felt the absence of God yeah. before death. And I think that gives us, as, as normal people, permission to doubt. Oh, yeah. Um, permission oh, yeah. to feel the, the absence of God. Even though God is not absent from us, um, it's okay to kind of ask and say, God, where are you in yeah. all of this? Um, to feel forsaken. Mm -hmm. And the obedience of Jesus, the trust yeah. that Jesus has in God to know that something will come from this. Right. That it's not the end. I mean, I don't think Jesus knew what was going to happen. That's my theology. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I do believe that he trusted God, mm -hmm. that something would come out of this, mm -hmm. and something incredible did come out of this. Yeah. And so, and and with along with that, we are asked to be obedient as well. Because what did Jesus then ask the women? Jesus said to the women, "Go and tell." And for Easter, that's what as Easter people, that's what we do. We come and we acknowledge the death of Jesus. But we uh, share in the resurrection of Jesus. We find joy in that resurrection. Mm -hmm. But the part of that then is to go and tell. Mm -hmm. And it, we can't just sit on it. Um, it's something, the mission of God is to let other people know about it as well. Right. And so as Jesus was obedient, Jesus' obedience goes far beyond any of our obedience to God. Uh, because quite honestly, it's very difficult for us to be obedient. But Jesus' obedience was rock solid. Mm -hmm. And the the obedience of the women in that moment was rock solid too, mm -hmm. because they absolutely went back to the men mm -hmm. and shared with them what they'd seen. I, you hit on something about we don't have quite that faithful capability that Jesus did to be fully obedient to death. So as Lutherans, I think it'd be helpful to point out, too, that we don't rely on our right. own ability right. to be obedient. We don't rely on our own faith that we can muster to be obedient. We rely on the faith that God mm -hmm. kind of implants in us, mm -hmm. and we hope that that will be enough. And right. we believe it will be. Right. But, but again, it's not about how much faith I can have, how much faith you can have. Right. It's about... Okay, God, if you want me to be obedient, then help me to be obedient. Right. And and Christ modeled that. Yes. And I heard it one time, too, it said that anytime someone becomes a martyr or someone um, puts themselves on the cross mm -hmm. uh, trying to be as obedient as Jesus, uh, I once heard someone say, you don't look good on wood. <laughs> yeah. Because... At times we do that, and we do um, try to put ourselves on that cross, and we can't. Yeah. It's not our faith at that point. It's yeah. Jesus's. Yeah. It's Jesus's faith, his obedience yeah. to do that for us as well. Very yes. Well put. Yes. All right. I think that might be a good place for us to move into. We just wanted to share with you some stories from our ministry or our childhood or wherever that may be of um, just memories that we have. And I want to share one with you. This is, and, and Pastor Scott will know this neck of the woods as well. The church that I'm referring to is um, still, the church building is still there. The church has been deployed. Uh, this is Winfield Lutheran Church. Mm. Uh, in our uh, Zion Lutheran Church, actually in Winfield, Ohio. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they are were at the time yoked with Shanesville Lutheran Parish, okay. which is in Sugar Creek. Mm -hmm. 
And so with being yoked, they would go back and forth every year. One year, mm -hmm. the sunrise service would be in Winfield. Mm -hmm. One year, the sunrise service would be in Sugar Creek. And mm -hmm. so the year that it really stands out to me was when it was in uh, Winfield. And Winfield's out in the country, and the church is on the top of a hill. Mm -hmm. And there's a cemetery right there. And it was just an... an Oddly enough, I'm going to throw this in as well because the outhouse was there as well. And it was just sort of this, I was thrown back into this other time. But with the sun rising and hearing the words of, the, of scripture and being in that cemetery, it was just this incredible, um, incredible, maybe not understanding of, but incredible uh, intake maybe of, mm -hmm. of just taking in the gospel and uh, realizing how much that gospel is something that we're supposed to live every day of our lives and that many people who were there in that cemetery did just that they were faithful yeah. faithful people and yeah. so there even among the living and the dead mm -hmm. that Easter is significant for us and so that was a, that was a very powerful mm -hmm. piece for me that day yeah well I'm going to begin with something not quite as uh, sentimental, but yeah. funny nonetheless. As a kid, you, you asked about Easter memories, and I kind of went back and thought of one. And one that I found ironically funny, this will be a way that the people of All Saints can kind of get to know me a little bit more. I was not, uh, I, I didn't look like I would become a pastor <laughs> at age about 10 or 11 or 12. I was kind of a little hellion. Um, but my mom and dad kind of pandered to me, I think, one Easter. And in my basket, I had a VHS tape that I had asked for. And it was called, like, This Is Horror. And it was a kind of behind the scenes a look at horror films and special effects and the makeup that went into them about the Friday the 13th movies and all those. Yeah. And I, I think of it now, I'm like, how inappropriate for <laughs> Easter. But again, it, it, it showed the loving support of my mom and dad, uh, even when I was maybe wandering from the path, you know, and all the things that I was into. They, they loved me and, and pandered to me. Yes. Um, so we always had, you know, we had the typical Easter basket with candy and maybe one or two little gifts that we had asked for. Um, my kids kind of have yet to have a typical Easter. Um, I've served oh, at so sure. many various uh, churches from seminary to internship to before I went to seminary. Um, Lydia specifically has done a couple egg hunts, but they haven't really had a, a standard typical you know, every year we do this kind of thing, and uh, so I'm hoping to get them to that point. Yes, yes. So, yeah. Good. And, uh, another memory I have of uh, an Easter, it was this again was an Easter sunrise service. As uh, Pastor Scott mentioned, that we serve in different churches uh, as we're in seminary. And uh, this particular church that I was serving, we did the sunrise service, and I, I don't remember why. We were supposed to be outside at the time, and, I, and I, it must have been raining or cold. It was something for us that we decided to do the sunrise service inside the church. And we were at one point praying, so all of us are with bowed heads and praying, and then as we all collectively looked up, there was a glass door over to the side of us. And as we looked over at the glass door, there were ducks there <laughs> looking in. And it made me think, all of God's creation mm -hmm. is joy-filled or shows up for the resurrection mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and how important it is for, for all of that yeah. to happen. Yeah. So that was, that was a fun, fun piece. Mm -hmm. um, and I also will share this. I did wear pink shoes that year, and the pastor's daughter and I had a great conversation about my pink shoes. Okay. So you all will appreciate the fact that shoes came up into one of my conversations <laughs> as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I think that's about all I have. Yeah, uh, I, and I just want to share, too, from my childhood. I want to mention that um, we always, always, and some of you will know this, always had new clothes or newer clothes to us, hand-me-downs if possible, but but almost always, if my parents were able to, it was new clothes for Easter, for each mm -hmm. of us. And not just new clothes, it was a, my sister and I always had a bonnet, 
and my brother had a hat. Mm -hmm. My brother, little brother, had a hat and a tie, mm. and we got new spring coats. We that had was, new clothes too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Year. And it was this just this wonderful piece. But along with that, I remember going to church, mm -hmm. uh, and I think for me that's been such a significant part of Easter. Easter is about gathering with the body of Christ. And knowing that this year we may not be gathering together as the body of Christ, but we are gathering together. If you are watching this, whatever time that you are seeing this, our Easter morning worship, whatever time you look at that Easter morning worship, we are gathered together. Because that's what the body of Christ is about. The body of Christ is not about a building. The body of Christ is about people who come together with the same beliefs. And that is that Jesus Christ died and was raised again. Mm -hmm. and, th and so that we might be free to risk being in this world uh, obedient to God's will. So Easter for me has this wonderful uh, feeling about uh, the family that I share at churches that I've been, and I've been to many, many churches along the way, mm -hmm. celebrated many Easter's with many different people, but it also is for me a time of family mm -hmm. because uh, we always had a family gathering on Easter, and, and uh, those are significant times. So uh, as we look forward to this and as Easter approaches, we are, it is that kind of um, a little bit of, sadness perhaps mm -hmm. that we aren't together in the church but let me tell you this there's great joy there's great joy in the resurrection of Jesus Christ no matter where we are and as we know often the people the Jewish people have been scattered mm -hmm. for so long mm -hmm. and yet they celebrate their festivals together yep. no matter the distance and as Bonnie has said too, when we when we finally are able to come back together in this place, we will celebrate. Yes. It will feel like the conclusion to an extended Holy Week Lenten kind of time um, through this pandemic. And so, um, you know, there will be death, there is hurt, but there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, I think we'll acutely feel that. Uh, when we come back together and we can be with you all here so. so thank you for joining us this morning and we look forward to being with you again as we will uh, celebrate Monday Thursday Good Friday and Easter blessings to you in this day be well <laughs>